the locals lovingly call it Sana Laibak, meaning land of gold. And this place is just that. A brave history, a rich culture, and a beautiful people. India is vast. It's cosmopolitan, full of ethnic variety. I had no idea what ethnic diversity in India actually meant until I came here to the least explored, most mysterious and arguably the most beautiful region of India. Join me as I explore it firsthand. Kurumjari and welcome to Manipur. Take one look and it is no wonder that Lord Irwin called it the Switzerland of India and Pandit Nehru called it the Jewel of India. She is one among the seven striking sisters of India and arguably the richest in culture. It is here where a myriad of ethnicities have made a home together, where women take the forefront, where the youth want to make a difference. It is the land where heroes are born, where each stone tells a bygone story. And to discover the many stories of Manipur, I decided to start right at its center. Step into the hustle bustle of the capital city of Imphal and your mind takes you in spinning circles on where to start. It's my first day in Imphal and day one in any new place, anywhere, is all about where to begin your journey and Manipur has so many options. So, I've decided to take the more authentic way, get on the streets and ask some locals. Hi guys! Hi! Hi, hi. Uh, It's my first day in Imphal and I'm just wondering what to do. Any ideas? We go visit War Cemetery. War Cemetery? Yeah. Okay, War Cemetery. Anything else? Kangla. Kangla? Loktak Project. Loktak Project, okay. Kaibulangjang National Park. Kaibulangjang National Park. But what should I do first? Kangla. Kangla. Sorry, what was that? Kangla. Okay, Kangla. I have to go to Kangla. Yeah! Kangla. Once the capital of Manipur and the ancient palace of the royals is located right in the heart of Imphal and is of most importance to the Manipuris for more reasons than one. So my journey in Manipur begins in Kangla. I mean, how could it not? Since time immemorial, this has been the most important place historically and archaeologically for all of Manipur. It was the seat of royal power for over 2,000 years and has survived countless invasions and occupations. Legend has it that this was the only dry land on earth and life originated from here. Some people believe that it is so sacred that the entire cosmology of the universe is centered here. And there's a really cool way to get around. Oh, you can simply rent a cycle and be on your way. And off we go! The Kangla complex is so large that cycling is always a faster option to see it all. Of course, that is if you can keep other distractions at bay. Phew! This place is so huge that you need hours to get around. I don't have hours, so I'm going to meet a really knowledgeable friend of mine who's going to help me fill in the blanks. Hi! Hello, Humba. Welcome to Kangla. Hi, Shashikan. Thank you. So it's such a big place. It's a huge area. Yeah. Kangla, it's approximately uh, 237 acres in total. Wow! Hmm. No wonder I got so lost. 
You have to tell me a little bit about Kangla. So it will be quite difficult for me to sum up the entire legacy of 2000 years, but I'll try my best. <laughs> uh, say Kangla. Uh, to us, Kangla is not just a fort. To every Manipuri, it is the place of cultural importance. It is a place of historical importance. It is a place of uh, religious importance. Culturally, can you tell me how is it important? Yes, Kangla, it has witnessed three important cultural phases. Okay. The first one, ancient Manipuri culture, known to the general popular uh, people as Hanamahism. It started, say, right from the 33 CE, where Pakhanba became the first king of Manipur. Sanamahism is a pre-Vaishnavite belief that lasted between 33 CE all the way up till 1891. Like any other ancient myth, the one of the Methes is quite similar to the popular story of Ganesh and Kartik. There was once a supreme god who sets out a task for his two sons, Sanamahi and Pakhamba. He proclaimed that the one who could go around the universe and come back first would be crowned as the king of Manipur and the universe. Sanamahi, being the elder son, sets out to complete the task, while the younger one, Pakamba, takes a different route. Pakamba claims that for him, his father is his universe and takes seven rounds of his father's throne. Impressed with Pakamba's wit, his father thrones him the king of the universe. And that is also how he gets his name. Pa, meaning father, and Kamba, the one who knows his father. Meanwhile, Sanamahi returned much to his dismay. To avoid any differences between the brothers, the father thrones Sanamahi as the god of all households. And till date, every Manipuri house keeps a southwestern corner in old to him. If we go to the second phase, which starts with the arrival of the Hinduism in Manipur. Ah, okay, the uh, Vaishnavism. Yeah, Vaishnavism. Ah. It started somewhere around uh, 15th, 16th century. The complex which we are standing right now, it's one of them. It's the temple of the Sri Sri Govindaji temple. And it was constructed somewhere around middle of the 19th century. Okay. Is it true that originally it had Like gold tilted roof. And marble, white marble Yeah, white floors. marble flooring. This area is where all the performances yeah. would take the dances and the, the dances. rituals. Yeah. And since you talk about the dance, I mean, I couldn't like resist myself talking about the Ras Leela. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, Rajshri Baiga Chandra was the father of the modern uh, Manipuri culture. Yeah. He introduced Ras Leela in Manipur. The Ras Leela is not just a dance form. It is integral to the people of Manipur in many ways. The medium of worship, a spiritual expression, Indispensable to most ceremonies, it is the cosmic dance of Lord Krishna. Even though Ras Lila is based on Jadev Git Gobin, mm -hmm. the dance forms is totally indigenous to Manipur. Correct. But when you look at the Ras Lila, the performer, their eyes will always be on their fingertips or on the floor so that their dhyan to the Lord oh. remains intact. Oh my God, that's <laughs> amazing. And the last part, okay. which started somewhere around 1891 with the, the British conquest of the entire Manipur, which we call it as the Anglo-Manipuri War. Okay. And after that, they occupied the entire Kangla campus. New palace was built somewhere around 1905, and the entire royal family was shifted from Kangla to the new palace. The Kanglasa, which you saw in the front. The Kanglasas are those, those beautiful, big, white, one, yeah, white, mythical beasts. Yeah, mythical beasts. It's a, a state emblem of Manipur. So, so as a punitive action, right? Yeah, so they destroyed do, both those. It was only reconstructed uh, in the year 2004. After the British left, then this was the Assam rifle 
they occupied it for around another 50 years. So the world's oldest polo ground actually exists inside of Kangla, mm. where only royalty was allowed to play polo. Yes, um, very true. And they converted that into a helipad? Very true. It's situated right at the back. Right at the back? Right at the back. I see that. Huh. So when you talk of polo, yeah. so I can't like resist myself talking about like we the Manipuris are very proud that we gave the world the modern game of you polo. We did, this yeah. is true. And uh, since we are talking about a sound rifle, the entire Kangla complex was handed over to the to the Manipuri people on 20th November 2004 in the in the presence of the honorable uh, former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. That's incredible. So yeah. finally, Kangla has returned to, to its, its original the, keepers. Yeah, and we are trying to restore it to its original pristine glory. It's Thank so you. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, now now that my crash course in Manipuri tradition, religion, mm. and history mm. is done, now I, you should move out and see Imphal and more of a Manipur. Absolutely, yeah. it was so lovely. Thank it's you a, so yeah, much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Like it was meeting. A pleasure talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> That's great. Mm. So any ideas? Of what? After that lesson in history and culture, I'm now moving on to learn more about the pop culture of Manipur. Stop 1, a little DVD shop. For 2,500 years, Manipur has been India's bridge to Southeast Asia, enabling a migration of people, culture, even religion. But an unexpected consequence, as far as pop culture is concerned, has been that Korea has moved in. From high street fashion, to music, to slang, to film and TV, to be Korean is to be cool. I'm going to get myself a DVD. Boys over flowers. I am Sam and Gangnam Style. Stop two. I can't go home without any souvenirs or gifts. I'll be killed. And Manipuri basketry is a great option. Let's go buy some. Your pick of the day can range from corner or reed baskets to bamboo and cane products. And this market in Imphal has options of every kind. It's light on the pocket and great for the house. Stop three. A delicious Manipuri meal. A typical Manipuri thali is fit for a king. The preparation is simple, organic, healthy and not to mention high on spice. Wow! Look at that spread. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 things to choose from. What you'll get is the staple rice along with large varieties of leafy vegetables, boiled, steamed or fermented with some indigenous homegrown herbs and roots. So King usually got 108. I'm more than happy with 11. And the other thing is that Manipuris always eat anti-clockwise. And you start with this delicious boiled squash. Let's not forget the Manipuri favorite, fish. And in my case, three different kinds of it. For all that's left for me to do now, go home, get in bed, and relax with that Korean DVD, Boys Over Flower. Manipur's history of war is quite deep-rooted and not many books tell its tale. So to find out about the lesser-known Battle of Imphal, I took a little detour. This is INA War Memorial Complex in Moirang, which is 48 kilometers from Imphal. Moirang's Indian National Army War Museum celebrates the town's symbolic role in the Indian independence movement. It was here on 14th April 1944 that the anti-colonial INA led by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose first unfurled the Azad Hind flag. In this complex, we have three units that is the INA War Museum, the INA Netaji Library, and the Auditorium. 
This museum consists of the photographs related with the Indian national movement under the leadership of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Netaji was possibly one of India's most charismatic and least known about leaders and the last photograph ever taken of him is here. This place was once a battlefield during the Second World War time. The year was 1944. A war was raging across the world. In Manipur, British and Indian soldiers were defending themselves against a mighty Japanese invasion. 200,000 troops were fighting in an area less than 60 kilometers by 35 kilometers for four blood-soaked months. And the ultimate defeat of the Japanese at Imphal changed the course of world history. INA Museum is dedicated to the great soldiers who have died fighting for the freedom of movement of India. It's dedicated to Netaji as well as to the unknown soldier of the INA. To pay my tribute to the fearless soldiers without whose sacrifice an independent India would not exist, I returned to the war cemetery in Imphal. There are so many stories here that almost no one remembers, and yet the earth and the hills seem to be telling them. The Battle of Imphal was probably some of the most ferocious fighting in World War II, and all that remains in this beautiful region is an underlying poetry. This is the grave of an unknown soldier, and all it says is known unto God. Now that really gives you goosebumps, huh? Faith knows no age. There is the history, and there is the present. And I'm about to find people who love to celebrate their faith. In 1981, William Pettigrew, an Anglican Christian born in Edinburgh, and educated in London, brought Christianity to Manipur. No matter what.